students let us continue our discussion on the isomerism the our next topic is stereoisomerism two or more molecules having same molecular formula same structural formula but their arrangement in space is different such molecules exhibit stereoisomerism okay so there are of two types geometrical and optical Geometrical isomerism is exhibited in organic chemistry by the alkene family. So, if you consider an alkene that is carbon carbon double bond, the remaining two bonds of carbon are occupied by the groups. We label them as A and B, and we specify that A group A should not be equal to group B. In that case, when we place the similar groups, say for example a here on the same side of the double bond and b also on the same side of the double bond but a and b are in opposite sides then such isomers are called cis isomers on the other hand if you place the similar groups on the opposite sides okay across the carbon carbon double bond then such isomers are called trans isomers you may notice that the chain length in these compounds are same so they are not chain isomers the position of the various groups are same so they are not position isomers the functional group present in them is also same so they are not functional isomers they are not metamers also everything being same only when you view them from space then the a here appear one behind the other b appear one behind the other and here you find a is eclipsing b and b is eclipsing a so that is the only difference so such isomers are called geometrical isomers these occur because there is a restricted rotation around the carbon carbon double bond normally it is believed that if you have a carbon carbon single bond the bonds the carbon atoms are at constant rotational motion that we shall be doing in the hydrocarbon chapter <coughs> but here when you have a double bond the rotation becomes restricted because it involves breaking of a bond so because of this restricted rotation this kind of isomerism arise okay let us try to understand with an example we have taken two examples here one is you see there are four carbon in the chain and there is a double bond between carbon 2 and carbon 3 name of this compound is but because there are four carbon but in because there is a double bond and the position of the double bond is carbon 2 and 3 so we take the lower number so name of this is but to in and you see the other compound which we have taken it is also having a carbon chain of four and the double bond is between 2 and 3 so this is also but to in then in what way they are different you see here <clears throat> the difference is here the ch3 groups are on the same side of double bond and here the ch3 groups are placed on opposite sides of the double bond their chemical properties are same but their physical properties are different okay uh, one of the physical properties which will be different is dipole moment which we have already discussed earlier in the chapter chemical bonding <clears throat> another example for your reference cis 2 3dichloro but 2 in you see here instead of hydrogen instead of hydrogen taken here we have taken two chlorines and you must be no, must have noted that these two groups are not same that is the condition for showing geometrical isomerism so here we have taken two structures one in which ch3s are on the same side and another where the ch3s as well as the cls are on the opposite side so the first one is cis isomer and the second one is trans isomer so you need to know all this much only as of now for the geometrical isomers optical isomerism it is something to do with light and it should be done in detail in class 12 so for the timing you should only know that optical isomerism is a stereo isomerism Uh, stereo uh, i mean the pair of isomers they are having same molecular formula same same uh, structural formula but when they are doing some their orientation in space is different and their behavior towards light 
a special kind of light is different. So with this we come to the end of the topic isomerism. The next topic is bond fission or bond cleavage. As you know when chemical reactions takes place lot of bonds are being broken and lots of bonds are being formed. Say for example if I take CH3Cl treat it with NaOH and the product formed will be CH3OH plus NaCl. So you may note here the bond between CH3 and Cl has to be broken to carry out this reaction. The bond between sodium and hydroxide also has to be broken and new bond will, bond will form between CH3 and OH and new bonds will be forming between sodium and chloride. So during any chemical reaction lots of bonds are being broken and new bonds are formed. Now in this present topic we shall be discussing how what are the ways bonds can break okay so bond breakage can be classified into two categories one is heterolytic bond cleavage another is homolytic bond cleavage in heterolytic bond cleavage what happens as you know when a covalent bond is formed please remember when we talk about organic molecules they are all covalent compounds so covalent bonds are always formed by sharing of electrons between the combining atoms. So when this bond between A and B is formed, A contributes one electron and B contributes another electron and the two electrons being shared between A and B. But when it comes to the question of breaking, now depending on whether A or B is more electronegative, this electron cloud will be pulled accordingly. Here I have assumed that B is more electronegative than A. As a result what happens? The electron cloud will be more towards B and during breakage both the electrons which was responsible for forming this bond goes to B. As a result we end up with A with a positive charge and B with a negative charge. That means during heterolytic cleavage we always end up with a cation and we end up with an anion. Now if a plus since we are talking about organic compounds we assume that A plus could be a carbon with a positive charge. So when carbon bear positive charge we call them carbocation. As you can see here it is mentioned A plus is C plus and you can see C if it is having three uh, um, positive charge it should have three bonds around it not four bonds and it is called carbocation or carbonium ion as you know EM stands for positively charged ions. <clears throat> on the other hand if B minus the anion is carbon bearing compound then I mean the charge is on carbon here since carbon is carrying negative charge it will have all four bonds around it. It is called carb anion and when you together you pronounce you call it carbon ion. Okay? So please remember during heterolytic bond cleavage in organic chemistry we land up with a carbocation or a carbon ion or both depending on the species taken. Now here what you need to know is the stability of carbocations. So here we need to understand what we understand by primary, secondary and tertiary carbocations. If you look here when the carbon bearing positive charge is attached to only one carbon such system or such species are called primary or one degree. On the other hand, when you have a carbon with a positive charge attached to two other carbons, such a system is called secondary or two degree. Exactly the same way, when you have three carbons, three carbons attached to the carbon bearing positively charged, then we call it tertiary. Now each of these carbocations have their own stability. Okay, and you need to remember this stability order. It has been found that It has been found that methyl carbocation which is the smallest of all carbocations is least stable followed by primary carbocation followed by secondary carbocation and most stable is tertiary carbocation. 
in higher studies we will get to know some more types of carbocate ion but as of now we can stick to methyl to tertiary now you can see here we have a carbon with a positive charge and altogether there are three carbons and both these carbons are ch3 groups so we call it isopropyl carbocate ion it can be also written as ch3 twice c plus and here we have three carbons attached to carbon bearing positive charge which can be written as ch3 thrice c plus and it is since altogether we have four carbons here we call it tertiary butyl carbocate ion but it is not necessarily that always you have to have three carbons for secondary four carbons for tertiary not necessarily you may have more okay but the idea is the carbon which carry positive charge should be attached to two carbon for secondary one carbon for primary and three carbons for tertiary so that is the stability order for carbocate ions now <clears throat> the stability of carbon in carbon ions will be just reverse okay here methyl is found to be most stable followed by primary secondary and tertiary please try to remember the stability order they are very often asked in the exams and you need them for reactions when we'll do in the next chapter the another type of carbo uh, bond cleavage is homolytic bond cleavage in homolytic bond cleavage what happens as the name suggests you can understand usually this kind of cleavage takes place when the combining atoms are same that means the pool of each atom i mean the electronegativity of each atom is more or less same then what happens the bond which is formed by sharing of electrons between a and a while breaking also they go to the respective atoms and how we show this bond cleavage we show it by from the middle of the bond with a half arrow called fish hook arrow and during this bond cleavage what we get we get neutral species they are called free radicals they are highly reactive okay they neutral they don't carry any charge and they are called free radicals so here i have taken another example of ab you can show the arrows this way or you may show the arrows this way also doesn't matter but the idea is the arrow should be half arrow they should begin from the middle of the bond and go to the respective atom okay so in the first case in the combining atoms were same we get two free radicals of a and since here the two combining atoms are different here we get two different free radicals a dot and b dot and since we are talking about organic chemistry a dot or b dot must be containing carbon now what is the stability order of different types of free radicals here it has been found that free radicals have the same kind of stability as that of carbocate ions that means methyl is having minimum followed by primary here we have taken ethyl free radical don't forget these dots okay then we have secondary we have taken here isopropyl free radical and highest is tertiary we have taken tertiary butyl free radical so that's all about the bond cleavage our next topic will be different types of effects thank you